Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers and in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at this home um, light um, saw which came in um, as part of a job lot. I believe this is the last one um, of the collection to do however I do have to go back and look at the partner again because I've got some spares for that and also going to be revisiting the strimmer and also the McCulloch hedge trimmer. They're both not quite running as well as I would like the hedge trimmer, <coughs> the McCulloch, I've actually managed to get a another carburetor for that one um, because you couldn't tune the carburetor um, despite the fact people have been sending me links to where the tuning tools are. Uh, I've got this carburetor, I got this for about four quid um, and this is fully tunable so I'll be putting that one on and also I've been busy with parts looking to get um, gasket and diaphragms which I have I've been very lucky to get a gasket and diaphragm set. This one is for the partner itself. Um, and this one come from this fantastic company who I'm not affiliated with any way, shape or form. Um, but if you go to these people's website, um, which is um, not on here, here it is, um, www.stens.co.uk. Uh, drop them an email and they'll send you a catalogue out. They are fantastic and they've got literally every single carburetor, gaskets, hedge trimmers, you name it, they do it um, in, inside that catalogue. So feel free to check them out. Um, I think I paid about, don't quote me, about £6 on this, on this gasket and diaphragm set. So I got that from them and I also picked up, whilst I was shopping online, a um, gasket and diaphragm set for the... Uh, McCulloch trimmer as well, a complete um, carburetor set that is uh, for that as well. That one I believe came from China, I think. So it is a copy, but uh, it's got to be better than one that's already currently in it. So I've got lots to do, but today I want to move on and check out this home this home light um, chainsaw. This was part of the job lot, as I say. Um, I have had it running already once. It has fired and ran, but there is an issue with it. And until we get down and dirty, we won't know. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's check out this chainsaw. Right, so already I'm already benefiting from having so much more room in my shop to actually be able to stand up and uh, fully walk around all, all the table or, or turn the table around. It's, it's working fantastic for me already. So. Here's the chainsaw. Let's put the scabbard down for a minute. Uh, the chain itself, it doesn't look too bad. It wants a tickle. Um, it's not shocking, shocking though. I've seen a lot worse. So it should already have some fuel in it. I believe, yes it does. Now let's just check the oil whilst we're here. Oh, the seals come off of there. That's not, not much copper. Let's get a new ring for that. Oh, it's going to leak. It's got a little bit of oil in there, not a great deal. What I might try and do is just try and force that onto there just so it actually does something rather than nothing. But it does want a new O-ring. Oh, that's going to leak absolutely everywhere. That's not going to stay on there now. Someone's had a little play with that, I think. Let's just try and have it down as much as possible. It will probably leak now taking it off. However, that's what it is. Uh, let's just try and fire it up then. It should have a primer on it, I believe, yet yeah, down here underneath. Let's give that three or four pumps. There's instructions there on how to start it. Pull the choke out, put the throttle lock on, and turn that on. Brake is on, and let's see how we get on. So it fires straight up on second pull. As you can see it fires up um, and we are getting an oil dispersed line so it is actually chucking oil out as well however the brake itself you have to pull it in ever so slightly to get it to come off the brake it won't 
fully unlock and it won't it locks on but it's not actually releasing fully as i would like so it's got a problem with the brake um, which we'll investigate let me grab some tools get my, my stool over and we'll have a look into it okay so the first thing i want to do is have a quick look at this brake handle see what secrets are in here now it may actually be broken and if it is um i need to try and find a source of spare for it but that's not going to be an easy thing because they change the models regularly on these oh my word who did that up there it goes i'm hoping it's just literally going to be absolutely clogged in here that's what i'm hoping i'm going to find So let's undo those. Get a magnet tray in. Let's have a little look. So this is an all in one design. It looks like it has been cooking here. And it's not the same as the other ones where you actually had the the brake on this side but I'll give that a clean anyway I'm going to take all this all this covering off and give it all a good clean inside here just to see if that improves it that wasn't actually doing that before I'm hoping there's some kind of adjustment on there or something's come adrift let's take this bar off and give us a clean anyway see what's going on because it's got so much stuff in here and it looks like it's actually actually been burning inside right that's the um, chainsaw now all been compressed off so that's all now nice and clean as clean as I can get it and again that's now locked that's off but binding and it just wants a bit more just so that can just compress up but I don't think I'm going to get any more adjustment out of that. Really, I don't. I think it is just worn. But we'll see. Now, some of this lot looks like it comes apart relatively easy. That should be a guard of some description. Does that pop off? Uh, one more down here to do. The two little tiny screw heads there, the torx bits. And that should give me that guard. There it goes. So there's nothing in there. It'd be nice to get an adjustment on that. So it doesn't want a great deal. There's no more adjustment to be had here. You can probably buy these springs for it um, to allow it to lock off. Is this gone ever so tight? I don't think by removing this and cleaning that up will give me any more, which is a shame. So let's continue. Let's take that off if I can. So let's see a bit smaller than that, I think. That one. Yeah. And let's see what secrets this holds in here so an adjustment would be fantastic but I'm, I'm not I'm not holding out much hopes spring in there I can see and that's connected to the um, to the brake itself I'm gonna try and remove this clutch this uh, circlip to remove this clutch plate 
to see if there's anything involved in that. It's a circuit just here, so I'm to try and tease that out without losing it, like so. And then that should lift off. Is that all in one piece, is it? They generally are on these, on these ones. There it goes. Here's a clutch plate. It's not a mammoth amount there. That looks really good actually. I'll give it a bit of a clean up, see if it'll help. Um, but I don't see that. I can't take no material off of that at all. But I'll give it a clean anyway with some carb cleaner and I'll come back. Right, so that's now had a bit of a clean. I've taken no material off of that at all. I'm not allowed to. Um, I wouldn't say it's binding heavily. It is literally a gnat's breath. And I just can't take any more off of that. I don't know if there's any, if I can just literally bring this plate down a smidge, just to try and manipulate some some extra off of it. I can see the spring, the spring is just behind here. There's a spring that gives me the tension that I require. But you shouldn't have to hold that in to um to operate this saw because that wouldn't be right. Saying that, that's better. It's actually doing it by itself now. Let's lock it off. Bring it back. Yeah, that's better. That's actually running. Look at that. Literally just spray some W some cleaner up inside the um the spring. So let's continue to do that for a bit. Do you think there's some dirt up in there? Let me get that compressed as well. See if that'll help. But it's already, already better. Let's grab my compressor. hand now earlier on it is binding slightly but nowhere near as bad as what it was that's locked yeah that's better could just be dirty I'm gonna grab some WD-40 whilst I'm here <coughs> I'm gonna get a bit of an all up as well just shoot that straight up in there I think that was just dirty. Won't know until we put that all back together. That runs really nice there, but it is running. That's gone stiff again. I think it's just washing out all that stuff that's in it, all that dirt and grime that's in there. Yeah, I'm getting chunks of stuff. <clears throat> I think it's gonna need a serious clean. And um, it could be something see, just pinching down inside here. That's not allowing that, um, that to go all the way back. So let me go clean up and I'll come back to you. So I'm having a clean and literally I'm just, there's big chunks of stuff that's just shot out from by the spring if I can get this out I'll try and show you look at that look big chunk and it's just compacted dirt and uh, wood chip so that's what it is I think it's going to be a case of continually cleaning this soaking it I might put it on the side actually and uh, just trying to run all this stuff out 
so much stuff in here. Um, that's why it's not uh, not doing what it should be doing. So I'll continue cleaning, compressing until I get it A1 clean. And then hopefully, I'm hoping that will fix this problem. So back in two ticks. Right, that's about as clean as I'm gonna get it. Uh, literally, that it was filthy in there. I was getting all sorts of debris coming out. So let's try and put that back in now. Take that brake off. It is off. Try and run that into there. On. Off. No, it's still not having it. And I'll try and push that down home first, that might make a difference. No, it's still it's still binding. So that's gonna need a new um a new break. So you should better buy these, I would have thought. But I'm still getting this binding business going on. And no matter what I do, I just cannot get any more out of there. It looked really good for a while. That's where it needs to be like that. And as, as soon as you let go of it, you can turn it, but it is, there's a lot of binding there. And so I get this handle off, which I can't yet figure out how that's gonna happen without dismantling the entire um, assembly, which is ridiculous. But there is another grommet on the inside here, which I might try and get that out first and see if that handle then just slip away. It should, it should literally just pinch away. I'm gonna try and remove it from here as well. Lift this, there's a little tiny pin just here. Uh, if I can get under that, that might give me a little bit of a free play as well. If I can get under there, here it comes. comes out and then just got to try and work on getting this um this handle off i can buy a new new piece for it and then hopefully that that cure it because there's no massive scoring on here so i think the problem lays here so i'm going to try and get this there's a little tiny um clip which is the same as this one which, which come off the other side try and remove that because that might be a retainer i might be holding it in place if i can remove that then uh, i might be get this handle off Right, I'll just give that some, a couple of taps of a punch and it has actually released it slightly here. So I should now be able to remove that grommet from there. Hopefully, he says. It's coming. Well, I've got something here. Something's just come adrift. There it goes. So that's what holds it, that little tiny grommet. <clears throat> so now, what's holding that all on? There's a little tiny clip just there. You can't see. That should come off. Got a little tiny plate. I wonder if that pin there pops out. It's a little tiny pin here, which I'm suspicious that pops out as well. Like a little retaining pin to say. I don't know if that pops out as well. Come on, baby. There goes something like that. 
that going to come out? I think I'll chew it up too much. It's all sort of sealed. It's not designed for you to get in here. That's a problem. But someone got in here when they fitted it, right? What's on the other side of that? Could be a circlet maybe on the other side of it. Shoot a bit of spray down. Give us two ticks. I'll come back once I've had sussed it out. Right, I'm going to go to remove a bit all this top cover just to expose a bit more what's going on. Just not giving it secrets up very well. And just by doing this, it may just give a few more secrets. Got one there, probably one down here somewhere. I know some of you may be thinking, you know, why are you going to always bother with just a cheap, cheap old saw? But if you can get it to run, which it is running, we just have a brake issue. The problem with chainsaws is there's not a lot of room to work on. And that's the issue with them. a bit more light on it it doesn't seem to be a clip on the back of there what I can see oh there is yeah there's a little tiny circlip just on the back of it just make it out that's gonna be an absolute pig to get off and put back on That I do know. I might be able to grab that with a pair of long nose snips. I think I can, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a swine. I can't even see. Right, let me try and remove this circuit from here. I'll let you know how I do it, but uh, it's gonna be a bit tricky. Once that's done, I should be able to take that, that whole device off. Right, I got her. I don't know where it went, but now that circlip um, will come out. I've got different circuits to put in, so I'll be happy with that. And that just lift straight out. So happy with that. I don't know where it went. I need to find it. It went inside the machine somewhere. Let's have a little look so I can see it. Can't see it as of yet, but I'll find it. It'll be in there somewhere. But I need to find it. Um, it can't cause any damage, but uh, it was definitely a pickle. Right, so here is the linkage, and as suspected, there's no there's nowhere to get any um, any tension off of it, which is a shame. So that's up, um, and literally, it's going to need a new a new linkage here. A new brake. Got to figure out how we get into there next because that seems to be all one piece. There's a pin here which bashes out. And I've got a feeling once you bash that one out, the whole lot then will then come up through because this is all sealed from what I can see. So, yeah, that's going to be a pickle. But there's no adjustment to be had on this spring. Oh, there is. There's a little. Oh, hang on. What's that there? What is that there? Just found something. So I wonder if I can't get into there. Take that out. Watch this all shoot apart now. That comes off. So now I'm hoping that will release this side of the cable of a break that should now lift up I can't got to take this off take that one out and then that will then release this um this break 
I mean that should then feed out of there. So let me try and punch that little tiny pin out just there. I mean all of that should then release. I mean you should better re renew this part here. That's got to lift out of AC, but that's got to be at that sort of angle to do it. And you know where you're going to get that is by removing that one pin just there. Now, closer inspection, I can literally manipulate this bar up. And then I think with another screwdriver, I might be able to get up inside here. It's probably a wrong driver to have, or something a bit thinner, which would be that one. Stick that up in there. And that should then release this mechanism, he says. Like so. And then that should now come back down through here, is what I'm guessing. Because the strain that out would be a bit of a pickle. It will, it will straighten. Okay, that's only just clipped onto there. But it don't give you a lot of room, of course. Let me try and unclip that from there, like so. Come on. That's it. Straight and melee out. And then that effectively will all come out. There's a spring. Come on, princess. And there it is. So that's what I should be replacing, this part here, uh, for a new one. The only other thing I can probably do is when you pull that back, that spring's gonna be compressed. I could try to compress that spring a bit more in the vise, just to force it. Um, just to see when I do put it back to see if it gives it any more slack. But the issue with doing that is I could be affecting the brake when it goes on. But what do you think? Should I give it a go or not? Should I try to compress that spring a bit more? Just if that's right, let me just think. When you pull the spring back, um, it's not, it's going to be fully tensioned. And when you flick it forward, yeah. So it, I might put that in, in the vise and try and squeeze that down. Just a touch, not a lot, just to see if I can't get it to compress a little tiny bit um, and then put it back together and see if it works. If not, I should be replacing this, but I've got a feeling this is not the issue, is what I think, because uh, these are a standard length. Um, it wants a bit of a clean, it has been cooking as well, so I give it a bit of a clean up. There's a few bits just here, see, just here, and that makes all the difference. But I give it a bit of a compress, see how that gets on, and I'll come back. Right, I have to compress that very slightly. Um, not a lot. To be fair, it went all the way in anyway, so. Um, just want to give this a bit of a clean up now. Uh, Cause we've got some score marks on the back of it and that won't be helping. So, all down here is scored. So I'll give it a bit of a clean up and I'll come back. Okay, I've fitted it back together again. And uh, there's my drama clutch. So now, with that pushed down in place, obviously. That is spinning better. It is spinning by hand. And if I activate the brake up, that's locked. And push it down without pinching my fingers. It spins quite freely. So I'm hoping that's going to fix it. I've got to bend this, this plate down a bit because it's not quite sitting as low as I would like on the actual plate itself. And I think it will benefit from a new 
for my new um a new break but see there's a little tiny kink in it just there that's a little tiny things like that that are gonna stop this from working properly so that is working I might just try and pull that out a touch it is designed to be working tight. It's supposed to grab that as soon as soon as you activate the brake. It's supposed to grab that, you know, um, which it is. But just by compressing that spring ever so slightly, has given me a touch more. I mean, that's solid. I can't even move that. Oh. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to start to reassemble it now. Um, and see if that's fixed it. Um, it is running a lot freer and hopefully um, that will work. So let me reassemble it. I've got some bits of clean up as well as I go to put it back together. I shan't show you me putting it back together. You can put another type of spring on here as well. Um, there's a hole for it just here. But uh, I'll put it back together. You don't need to see me put it back together again because that's going to be quite uh, time consuming as well. Um, it's not going to be an easy, an easy one to do, especially putting that circlip on that backside, which is going to be quite difficult to do. Um, but I'll put it back together and then we'll give it a go, see how we get on. Right, I've got half it back together. I just thought I'd come back to you just to show you what I've done. I put that one back in. I put this one in, got to fit a circuit to the back of it. That shouldn't be no big drama, I've got different kind of circlips and I should be able to get a set of circlip pliers behind it as well. So that's the, the brake on. And as you can see, um, that's now locked and with the brake off, um, that now spins quite freely. It's not a hundred percent free as much as I would like, but now I'm not getting that extra slack I had before, so it's it's actually doing its job. So I'm hoping that's done it. So I continue to put it all back together now, and I'll come back very shortly. Right back. Um, I'm not even prepared to discuss how hard it was to put that circlip on the back of that. I'm not even going to discuss it with you. Because trust me, you know I had the patience of a saint. Well, they were tested. Tested to the max. Every single time I tried putting a circlip on, it just fell down the back. You just can't get access. So what I did in the end is I got some star clips. Uh, these are quite cool. Um, and that just fits over the, uh, the, end, of the, the end of this bolt and uh, it all fits on there. So that's now sat just inside there. I don't know if you can make that out. Is there, is there see it? That's now in there and uh, that's now fully functionable. So that's brake on, nothing moves. Brake off, spins. Um, I have just literally just took this off again and just tried to push this down a bit to try and bend it, but it is um, strengthened still. So um, I've managed to get a bit on it, but every time I, I try to twist it a bit more, then um, that drum locked up. So. I'm going to leave it where it is um, and go from there. So I put all the plate on, that's all done. It was already feeding oil. I want to clean the bar. I've cleaned the inside of that plate as well, that's all done. So I get it all back together, put the bar, put the chain on, and um, I'll give it a run before I even try and tackle sharpening the yeah, chain up. Okay, just finishing up, just tightening this up. These don't have to be on colossally tight, but have to be on relatively tight. That will do. That does spin. It's not as loose as I would like, um, but as I say, we may have to come back to this and put a new brake on it. <clears throat> I've got to just fit the um, the cover back on. Which I'll do that now. Probably have to end up fighting with this now for three and a half hours. My attitude doesn't seem very good today, but I can assure you it was all right until I started working on this. This was a, a little bit of a pickle, but they generally are. I don't want to go near. Let's lift that screw up. They don't come out because they're, they're captive. That's better. All right, sit down in there. Um, little torps. Do that up. So I've got three of these to do. 
And then we'll have a go to see if that brake is actually working better. It wasn't working at all. Completely non-functional. Right, let's clear the decks and we'll fire it straight up so you guys can see. But I'm not manipulating um, how it's working. That don't belong in there. It belongs to hang that. Give me two ticks. I'm to keep everything as tidy as I can. Despite the fact it is actually a workshop. Right, no spare bits, that's always good. Let's have a fire up, see what happens. So at the moment, we've got brake on, nothing moves, brake off, it moves. So let's give it a go, see what happens here. Make sure you're live and recording. We've got over here a smidge, so you can see. Uh, it's been tipped up a few times, so it may not want to start initially. Let's give it some of that, some of that, some of that. Let me see how we get on. Turn it on might even help. Let me open my door up, let a bit of the old fumes out, and I'll come back to you. Well, you know, done, done. Um, I'm going to test that. I've got a sharpener blade up, and I need to find another O ring for the oil so that fits on there better. It's not actually leaking, but I haven't got a lot of oil in it, so I'm going to fill it up, see how it works. It will need another O ring. I don't have anything to hand, I'm going to have to pick one up from somewhere. Um, but it runs okay. The brake um, is pretty good. They're not. They're not brilliant, the brakes on them anyway, because it is only a hobby saw, it's not a professional saw. So um, they're not brilliant, they're not designed to be. But I am overall quite happy. I'm going to sharpen it, as I say, put some oil in, give it a cut of test. I've got some silver birch down here, which needs cutting up anyway. So I'll give it a go with that. I'll put my old protective gear on, so I always wear my protective clothes when I'm actually working a chainsaw. Um, and it's pretty good. It hasn't been started for a little while, I don't think. I don't think the, the I think the issue was a break, but um, I'm not sure whether it was actually the spring needed compressing because it, it, over time it, it stretched, or um, if there was a bit of a crimp in the in the brake it's in the brake itself. So, but either way, it's running, um, it's functional, which is what I like to see, and uh, I'm relatively happy with it. So that's good, good. Um, and unlike you, Pete, my chainsaw actually works. So that's fantastic. Um, I don't know what's next on a bench. I have got some other bits and pieces which I should show you in two seconds actually. I'll show you what else I've got coming in, what coming yesterday. So that's that. Um, one other thing, some of my subscribers asked me to do a wish list of tools and bits and pieces, materials that I would like, um, I, I need and what have you, and it's all part of um, the YouTube channel. So down below in the description you will find a link to my Amazon wish list. There's stuff on there from primer bulbs, filters, kinder eggs, coffees, drills, grinders, and what have you. It's all down there. I'm not pressurizing anyone to do so, but if they want to buy me um, anything from my channel um, to help me along, the link is down below to go and have a look. But let's have a quick little look outside, see what came in just last night, um, and you'll see what's coming up future on the channel. All right, let's have a quick little squiz of what we got. Now these came in just last night. <clears throat> got a Mountfield uh, self-drive, 421 uh, with an RS100. I quite like these little RS100s. For what they are, I quite like them. They're quite easy to work on, never had any issues with them. Um, looking around the machine, um, there's not a lot wrong with it. A bit of paint flaking here and there because the grass has been left on it, but the adjustable height works on it, that's good. And it's also still got the little tiny plastic guard that always falls off. This is a rear roller mower as well, but it's a push mower. Um, there's no fuel in any of these machines, so I'm not seeing any reason uh, why it won't start. However, this is a bit of a concern. Not that it's not functional, because it is, but generally this means the timing's gone. That's a sign. 
uh, because it snatches back and smashes against this. That could be why it's here, I'm not quite sure. Um, a bit of paint flaking, but I have got some red amber right here. That's had a petrol leak over time. So that'd be, that just probably knocked back and then painted uh, with some amber right red just to bring it up. Um, I can't leave it like it. So, and look at all this grass in here, look, absolutely full of it. So I might find a few surprises down in here as well, but that's the reason why that's probably a petrol leak at some point, I dare say. Also got in a uh, S461 power drive electric start, which is quite cool. That came in last night, there's a starter motor there for it. Um, no key to it though, I don't think. No, no key, but you can buy those or start up a screwdriver. Um, the throttle was gone, that's no good, although it's functionable. Um, and the drive cable's also gone as well, so I'm not quite sure on that one. And then he said he'd throw this one in for nothing, which is a little mount field, um, Mercury, never heard of that, um, with a Briggs and Strat on it. Um, it's missing a few bits and pieces. Um, but it all looks there, you know, it all looks there as in the engine looks complete and what have you. So that all looks good. I've got a throttle on it. I hate these throttles on these Briggs and Strattons. They're not designed to have one. Um, so that's all looks good. Single height adjustment again. That all works. And that looks in pretty good nick actually. But I haven't got a grass box for it. Um, and uh, I know I haven't got one. But what I could do is I might be able to change the flap to uh, make it work. I've also got a little roller in there too. How cool is that? Is that a little roller? What's that in there? Yeah, a little roller. Not seen that either before. That's something, that's something new. So I've had those come in. Um, they'll be on the bench quite soon. That wheel doesn't go forward. Something not quite right in there. But it could be because the drive cable's knackered. But uh, we'll have a look at those. Um, but this one would be quite a good little, little money turner. Um, they generally sell quite well in my area because I've got a plastic roller on them. So um, I'll be getting them in the shed and uh, we'll be working on them. Right, so that's what I've got just come in. Um, and I've got a hedge cutter to do, no, sorry, a hedge cutter and two chainsaws, a steel and a Ryobi. I've got the three mowers to do, um, which is good. So I've got lots of stuff coming in. I've got stuff to revisit, which has been a McCulloch hedge trimmer, the McCulloch trimmer and the partner hedge cutter. They've got to be revisited because I've got spares, carburetors, bits and pieces for them. So looking forward to doing that. Um, just on the one other thing about the, um, the wish list um, thing, that should be done via the Smile Amazon website, which I've linked it to, not the Amazon website. Effectively, it's the same thing, um, same passwords, same logins as your normal Amazon account. But if you go through the Smile Amazon account and select the Smith McGuinness Syndrome UK Foundation um, and set it up as your default charity of choice, Amazon will donate a percentage um, of every product you buy going on uh, to the Smith McGuinness Syndrome UK Foundation, which is of course is Riley Syndrome. Um, if you tell your friends and family about it as well, not about my wishes, but tell them about the small Amazon website and link it to the SMS um, UK Foundation, then all your friends, families can also be helping donate towards this fantastic charity that I support and that, that supports Riley as well. So that's cool. So thank you very much for joining me in this episode of Mixed Mowers. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you found it informative. If you did, leave a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave a thumbs down. Leave a comment down below and don't forget to hit the old bell on your way out. Until next time, don't forget people, take it easy.